Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to change it so that we can cycle between building uh, you know, different types of wall and floor pieces. So what I mean by that is, um, let's play this. So when we go to put a wall down, we want to be able to cycle through to have like um, a wall section with a door in it, or maybe a window in it. And with a floor we'll make it so that instead of just this floor piece, we can cycle to have like a ramp piece, which lets us get on top of here. So if we wanted to have a ramp going up here so we could walk around on this top piece, uh, we'll be able to cycle the floor to that. So to begin with, uh, we're going to need to change our um, building pieces so that they understand that they have multiple meshes, not just the one mesh. So if we go into building, build base, remember build base is the base class that uh, floors and walls both inherit from. So any variables we add to build base will automatically appear for our floor and wall and anything else we add to it for that matter. So in here, we'll add a new variable to build base, call this meshes, and this is going to be a variable of type static mesh reference. And it's going to be an array, so we can hold like a list of different meshes basically, rather than just one mesh. So the wall, all of the pieces we need for that are basically already in the starter content, so if we go over to build wall, uh, open full blueprint editor if it's not already. We should then have this meshes variable that we just added to the base. If this doesn't appear for you, then you need to go back into build base, press compile, and then it should be there in build wall. So we'll add three meshes to this. There's the wall piece we've been using all along. So that's, if you just search for wall 400, you've got this wall 400 by 400. That's the piece we've been using so far. And then the starter content also contains two other bits. There's the same thing, but with a window in, which is you just search wall window, you've got this one, wall window 400, 400. Make sure you go for the 400, 400 one, because this system we've made doesn't handle pieces of different sizes, so everything's 400 by 400. There you go, see, it's got a little window in, and then the same thing, but with a little door. So wall, door, 400 by 400. Okay, and then compile and save that, and we don't need to do much else in here. For the floor piece, um, if we go back over to build floor, open full blueprint editor if you need to. There's two elements to this. There's the floor piece we've been using all along, so floor 400. And then we want to make this kind of like ramp, like wedge shaped ramp piece basically. Now there isn't a mesh for that already, not the right size anyway, so we'll just quickly build one. Um, if you didn't know, you can make your own static meshes out of the simple geometry that Unreal has, so we'll start off with a box. So I'll go to geometry, box, drag a box in. Resize this using the controls over on the right here to be 400, 400, 400. And then what we want to do is basically take these two top corner vertices here and drag them down so that it forms like a um, a wedge shape. The reason I'm picking these two is because I want this, to, I'm going to move the pivot point to the back corner so that it has the same orientation as the existing floor pieces, uh, which I'll show you. Hold on. So the mesh we've been using so far, this one, Notice how it has its pivot so that it's at the kind of back corner, if that makes sense, with the x-axis pointing along one edge, the y-axis pointing along another edge, and z is up. It would have been better if we'd made this so that the pivot point was on the bottom of this rather than the top, because it will mean that things are slightly out of alignment, but that's not too much of a problem. Not for the purposes of this quick uh, tutorial anyway. So point is, we want to make our wedge so that it has this same orientation going on. Pivot point at the back with x down one edge and y down another edge. Um, so back here. We'll go to the geometry editing tab, pick, you know, holding control and click to pick these two vertices, drag them down. So we get that wedge shape. Then if you click on this back corner vertex here, right click and say pivot, set as pivot offset, that will be now where the pivot point is. So if you select this mesh, see it's pivoting from the back corner now, which is what we want. The last thing to do is turn this into an actual static mesh. So with this selected, not in the geometry mode, uh, geometry editing mode, you want to go to brush settings on the right, expand this panel, and you've got create static mesh. Now what this does is just turns whatever you've got as a brush shape into a static mesh. So hit that. It will want a name. Um, I'm just going to call mine wedge mesh. That's as good as any name for this. Create static mesh. And then that should now be done. So if you look in the, which, wherever you put this, I've just put mine in the content folder. You've now got this new mesh that we can add like any other static mesh. Okay, so back over in build floor. 
we can now go to our meshes array and set that wedge mesh that we've just made as the second mesh there. Perfect. Right, so now we've got the situation where um, both our wall and floor have multiple meshes. We need to set up a way of switching in between them. So the way to do that, we can need to store an integer somewhere saying which of these meshes are we using. So when, when we go to build a floor, is it mesh 0 or mesh 1 that we want? And then to be able to flick in between them. And then when we're building a wall, we say, well, is it mesh 0, 1, or 2 that we sort of left it on last? And again, a way of flicking in between them. So to do that, we can use something called a game instance. Now, a game instance, if you're not aware, is like a, a blueprint that gets created at the start of the game and exists for the entire life of the game. So even if you switch levels and stuff, like change to a different map, the game instance object still exists. So anything you store there is available for the lifetime of the whole game. It's just a convenient place to store things like this, like which wall are we building, which floor are we building. So um, we're going to do that, basically. So right-click in your content browser, new blueprint, and it is of type game instance. Select, and you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it building GI. And then this is where we're going to add a way of storing, you know, which wall are we making, which floor are we making, and the methods to switch in between them. So double-click this. And that should open. Okay, so what things do we need to build in here? Well, we could have a whole list of variables saying, like, current floor mesh, current wall mesh, but it's going to be a lot easier just to store these in a map. A map, if you've never used one, is um, it's a variable type that take it's a variable that takes two types basically, uh, one for the key and one for the value, and then you can look up values by key. So we'll create a map where we can look up and say uh, which floor mesh are we using, and it will return an integer zero or one. These, or we can say which wall mesh are we using, and it will return zero, one, or two, and just keep track of um, you know which one we're on. So in the game instance, new variable, call this. Uh, current mesh indices, as in which index of, of a mesh are we using. If you change this to be of type um, build base class and then turn it into a map, it's the bottom option here, you'll see it gets two types. In the the, the right-hand type is automatically integer, which is, which is convenient in this case because that's what we need. Um, we can set up some default values here, but first we need to compile the blueprint, so do that. Then add two entries to this map, one for build floor and one for build wall. So here I can use this to illustrate a, a bit more clearly what a map actually does if you're not familiar with this. So we'll come into this map and we'll say, what build floor are we currently using? And we'll return whichever number is here. So this number will change as we switch meshes. And the same goes here. We say, what build wall are we currently using? And it will return a number which will be zero, one, or 2. Um, it's a nice tidy way of keeping this organized I think. All we need to do now is write some functions to allow us to ask you know which of these, you know what are the values of these numbers by asking you know tell me which build floor we're on, which build wall are we on and we also need a function which can increment this number. So we'll start off with just asking you know what are these numbers because that's the easiest to do. So create a new function, call that get mesh index and then what this is going to need to do it will take a class from us either wall or floor and return the current value of the number associated with either wall or floor so the input for this function needs to be a class well it needs to be a build base class but we'll call it class variable type build base so um, if you don't know, so if you've got a variable of type build base, you can pass it a uh, build base class. Sorry, you can pass it the build base class itself or anything which inherits from that. So we could pass this uh, build floor or build wall. And what we will do then is, as an output, call that index that is of type integer. And all this needs to do is go into our current mesh indices map look up whichever class we've passed in and return the int, uh, integer associated with that class. So from our map, we do a find, wire in the class we've passed here, and that will just look up an integer and return it. So here you can see a, a little bit more closely what's going on. If, again, if you're not familiar with maps, say if we passed in um, build floor class to this, it would go into the thing, find the build floor entry, 
and return whichever integer is here. So say if that was 1, it would return 1. If that was 0, it would return 0. And the same goes for build wall. If we if we were using wall mesh number 2, and we passed the build wall class into here, it would look up build wall, find the int associated with it 2, and return that to us. So that's how we're going to be able to ask, you know, which of these meshes are we using. The next thing we need is a way of incrementing this. So if we press a key on the keyboard to move to the next mesh, Say we're on build wall 0, we want this to switch to build wall 1, then build wall 2, then back to build wall 0 again, so we can basically cycle through these three meshes. So the next thing then, add another new function, and call this one increment mesh index. So this function is going to want, well again, the class that we're interested in, wall or floor, so new input, called class, of type build base class. It's also going to need to know how many entry, like how many meshes do we have. So basically, what is like how many meshes have we added to this array? So in this case, we've got three. In build floor, we've got two. So what we want is so if we're on if we're on if we're using mesh zero at the moment and we press go to the next mesh, it should go to one. If we're on one and we press go to the next mesh, it should go to two. Or if we're on 2, it shouldn't go to mesh 3, because there isn't a mesh 3, so it should go back to mesh 0. So to, to know when to do that, this function, um, increment mesh index, is going to need to know how many meshes are there in this array, basically. So pass that in as another integer, and we can call this um, num meshes, or something like that, number of meshes, and that is an integer. What this needs to do then is First of all, go into our map again, find the entry associated with whichever class we've passed in. So this will return an int. So in the case of wall, this will return 0, 1, or 2. We want to add 1 onto that, so do an integer plus integer on whichever it finds. Add 1. And then to make things easier for us, we'll just store the whatever the current index plus 1 was, we'll store that in a local variable. So if you just drag off and go promote to local variable, and give that a name, next mesh index. Okay, so all we've done is find the int associated with whichever class, add one onto it, and store that in a variable. So just going back to build wall a second, if we were on zero, that will now say one. If we're on one, it will say two. If we're on two, it will say three. So if it says three, we've gone too far and need to reset back to zero again. So the way we can check for this is just say, um, we'll put a branch here. And we'll say if this int is no greater than or equal to the number of meshes in the array, so greater than or equal to this, then we need to reset that back to zero. So wire that up, make a copy of this set next mesh index. If this was true, we need to reset back to zero. And we can prove that out by looking back at build wall again. So the number of meshes is three. Yep. One, two, three. So if we've gone we're trying to access a mesh three that's gone too far we need to go back to zero so that's all that is of course if we're on problem that's that's fine um okay so if that was true reset mesh index to zero if that was false we don't need to change it because this is a perfectly valid index already all we need to do now then is update the value in the map so we need to go into this map here. Say it was build floor, we were on 0, now we're on 1, we need to update this value to say 1. The way you do that is grab hold of the map, do a get, and then use the add function. Now add is slightly misleading, so it makes it sound as though it's going to add a new entry to the map, which it will do if that, if an entry, so if there was no entry for build wall, and we called add and passed build wall into here, it would add a brand new entry, build wall. If there already is an entry, it will just overwrite it with, um, with a new value basically. So the value we want to add is next mesh index. Now one thing we can do with functions, because we need to basically wire in the class this here. Now to save you having a wire stretching all the way across the blueprint like this, which can get a bit messy, if what you want to wire in is an input to the function, you can just type get and then the name of this. So get class and it will get it as a variable for you. You'll see what I mean here. So if I go get class See what I mean? So you can grab hold of your fun function inputs like that to save you having wires stretching all the way across the blueprint, which is just tidier, I think. 
So we need to do that there and there. Move this all out of the way. Right, so that's really all that needs to do. So the one other thing, we do need to return the new value. So we'll add an output to this function. We'll call this uh, new index, and that can also be an integer. So um, the output now would have been added here near the start. Bring this over here. So once we've finished updating our map, we need to return whatever next mesh index now is. Okay. And that's really all this game mode, uh, game instance sorry, needs to do. We still need to tell Unreal to use this game instance class because at the moment, yeah, sure, we've created this game instance blueprint building GI, but the engine hasn't been told, you know, this is the one you're supposed to be using. So to do that, we need to go into Edit, Project Settings, find the Maps and Modes area, and down here, there's a game instance class, and at the moment it just says game instance. Which that game instance is the sort of built-in game instance that comes with the engine. In the drop-down list, we should have our building GI, so switch it to that. Otherwise, it, it, it won't. But it won't use this, and we won't be able to access any of these functions. Basically, now while we're in here, let me just check in the input. Yeah, so it looks like we've have in a previous video. It's been a while since I did this, but um, in some of the one of the previous videos, we've added this next mesh action mapping on the right arrow key it looks like. So what we want I'm assuming that what we're trying to wire up here is that whenever we press the right arrow key, it moves to the next mesh. So pressing right will cycle between wall, wall with window, door, and then back to wall again, for example. Okay. So to get this to work, we're gonna need a function which deals with cycling through these meshes. Now the best place to put that is going to be in the build base class because then again anything we add to the build base class will automatically get inherited by the build wall class and the build floor class so instead of having to add functions to each of these we'll just add it to build base instead um so yep yeah, open build base new function and call this next mesh and what this the job of this function will be we'll call this when we press the right arrow key basically and its job will be to change the mesh um, whichever mesh we're using, say this, will be cycled to the wall uh, with a the window, then the wall with a the door, then back to the just standard wall again. So how will that work? Well, we need to get hold of the game instance class that we made to find out, you know, which, well, we need to basically increment, increment to the next mesh. So this function we've just set up, increment mesh index, we need to call that. So from build base, do I get game instance? Then from here, we can do a cast to our building game instance. Cast to building GI, that's that. Then from there, we can access that function. So we can go increment mesh index. Uh -huh. And this wants to know which class are you talking about, wall or floor, and how many meshes are there available for that thing. So the first one, number of meshes, pretty easy. We just drag the meshes variable in. Do I get length? No. Length. So, yeah, so in the case of wall, if we're calling this from the wall uh, blueprint, this will be three. From the floor, it will be two. And they want to know which class are you? So, w which class are we interested in? So, if we're. If we're walls, we're interested in the wall class. Well, I'll re rephrase that. If we're trying to build a wall at the moment, we're interested in the wall. Blueprint. If we're trying to build a floor, we're interested in the floor blueprint. So from build base, the way that we handle this is just do a get self, which returns basically reference to this blueprint itself, and then just do a get class. And you'll see in a minute when we wire this all up through the player controller that this will give us what we want. So if we call this function from the wall blueprint, self get class will return the wall class, whereas if we call it from a floor blueprint, self get class will return the floor class. So that's how um, that's how we'll deal with that. Um, what we need to do now then, so okay, we've gone, right, you were on mesh, what, say zero, now you're on mesh one. We need to actually change our static mesh variable to use the right mesh now. So drag that in. This is the mesh component from the components list. And then we can say set static mesh. Goes, okay, which mesh do you want me to use? Well, it's going to be... Go into this meshes array that we've set up. 
and get whichever mesh we've now switched to. So whichever this new index come out at, comes out as, that's the mesh we want to use. So we'll do meshes get whichever index it is, 0, 1, or 2 in the case of a wall, uh, 0, 1 in the case of a floor, and wire that into new mesh. So that will switch meshes for us. Now the one thing you'll find, we also need to do that when we do a begin play. You'll see why in a second, but because we've done quite a bit of blueprint printing already, we'll get this to the point where we can run it and then sort out. Um, so we need to wire up the actual, we haven't wired up the right arrow key, have we? So we've said in here, next mesh command is the right arrow key, uh, but we haven't actually connected that up anywhere. So that will be uh, in the player controller. So building PC, this is where we handle all of our input. You may remember we've got, if I go to the event graph, yeah, what happens when we press the build wall button, the build floor button, the place build item, um, input, rotate input. So we'll keep handling all of our inputs in here. We'll have input action next mesh, which is that right arrow key input. If we press that, we want to check, first of all, are we actually trying to build something? If we are, then this is building boolean will be true. So check the value of that first. In the event that we are trying to build something, great, just get the build item, or item being built as I've called it here, and then call its next mesh function, which is the one we've just set up. See, and this is why that will work, because even though we added this function to the base class, build base, we're calling it through item being built, which will be either build wall or build floor. So that's the reason why, if I just go back to build base, the reason why this will work is because we're calling it from build floor or build wall, they will send in the relevant class. Whereas if we called this from the base class itself, it wouldn't actually work because this would send in build base. And if you remember, in the game instance, there are no meshes associated with build base because it doesn't have a mesh. So that's why that, that wouldn't work if we called it directly through the build base class. But doing it this way, because this will always either be a build floor or a build wall, this should work. Now we will have a couple of problems which you'll see in a second, but Let's run this and then come back to sorting those things out. So hit play. All right, so let's go to build the wall. And you see there, now by pressing the right arrow key, I can cycle through those three meshes. Normal wall down, then we'll cycle through a wall with a window, then maybe wall with a uh, door. Now notice, the one problem is, when we if we, we want it to basically stay with the one we've chosen last. So if I put a, um, a wall with a window down here, I'd like the, the new one that I'm placing to automatically be wall with a window, but you can see it's, it's always defaulting to the flat standard wall. Now the reason for that, if I just um, come out of the game, it's because when you create a new instance of wall or floor, they will always default to having whichever mesh is mesh zero in this list. And that's not what we want. We want it to default to whatever mesh we left selected last. So the way to handle this is go to build base, and go to the event graph, and then using event begin play, event begin play, as you may remember, runs whenever an instance of this blueprint is created. So whenever we create a new wall or a new floor, begin play will run. And what we want to do with this is say, right, set your mesh to the, the one that we're using currently, not mesh zero, unless the one we're using currently is mesh zero, of course. So this is pretty simple. We just do a get game instance. We cast to our type of game instance. So cast to building GI, connect this up. And then we can call that, um, what do we call the function? Get mesh index, that was it. So get mesh index just returns, what did we leave the mesh index on for this particular class? So get mesh index. Then as with um, the other function we just made, the mesh, the class that we're interested in is gonna be a get self. Get class. Why that in? So this will return whatever we left that mesh index on um, last. And then we can basically do the same thing as we've done here. So mesh, set static mesh. In fact, just copy these two. In fact, copy from your next mesh functions, copy these four nodes at the end. Go up to here, paste. And it's going to be whatever this get mesh index returns that we want. So now, if whenever we create a new wall section, event begin play will run. Wall will pass in its own class, and we'll get you know mesh zero, one or two, depending on what we left it on last. So let's go compile. 
and test that out. So now if I put a wall down, change it to a door, the next one will automatically have door selected rather than me having to cycle through and reselect it. Now the next thing we need to sort out is I have a feeling that our wedge mesh is going to cause some problems. So let's see. So we'll yeah, and then as you, we can place in normal floors or we can cycle through and place these wedges in. Now, I think we didn't set up any collision on this, so we should, we're should we probably going to be able to walk right through that. Yeah, okay, so we need to go and add some collision to this mesh, so let's come out of the game again. Find our wedge mesh. Now, because this is a very, very simple mesh, we can just use the mesh itself as the collision mesh. So what normally happens is you'll have something quite complex like a character or a vehicle, which will consist of like huge numbers of polygons. And you don't want to use that hugely complicated mesh as the collision mesh because it will just slow things down. So you tend to put like simple collision shapes on like boxes, uh, capsules, spheres. But for something this simple, we can just use the mesh itself as its own collision mesh. So the way to do that is um, scroll down here to the collision section and you've got um, a drop down here, collision complexity, which just says use, use complex collision as simple. If you hit that and then press to show collision up here and show simple collision. Yes, you see, it's, it's it's a bit difficult to see, but like if you highlight simple collision, it puts like a wireframe, a bluish wireframe around the mesh, which because it's the same size and shape as the mesh, it can be a bit difficult to see, but basically it's showing you that it's using the mesh itself as its own collision mesh. So if we save that now, the one other problem we're going to have is that's going to be too steep for the player to walk up. So we need to change the player character to say they're allowed to walk up surfaces greater than 45 degrees um, in angle. So that will be third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Highlight the character movement component. Then over here on the right under character movement walking, you've got walkable floor angle, which is just less than 45 degrees now. I'm going to change that to 50, which means we can walk up anything that's up to 50 degrees tilted from horizontal. Compile that. Um, now this should work. So let's try building a simple structure. So if I start off with some floors, I've got like floor, floor, floor. I have a floor there. Switch to walls. We'll have a couple of ordinary walls there and there. Then maybe we'll switch to wall with a window there, 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 and there. Then go for a door there. And then we'll go for, um, we'll put an ordinary wall in there. Then switch back to floors again. Switch to the wedge shape, um, that's fine for now. Yeah, see, then we can run up that. Then if we change back to ordinary floors and go there, 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 we can start to fill some of this in. But yeah, it works, basically. There will be some odd problems, like here, because of the way our meshes are made, they will intersect sometimes. I mean, you could sort that out by modeling the meshes slightly differently or changing the offsets, but for the purposes of this tutorial, this is fine. Um, but yeah, that basically works now. So we can put meshes down, we can cycle through meshes. You could add as many wall and floor meshes as you wanted, as long as they're, they all fit within a sort of 400 by 400 box. If you wanted to handle different shapes, you'd need to adjust all the blueprints to be able to take that into account. But um, this is all I really want to do in this very simple tutorial. So I hope that was useful. There's not really much else I need to do to this. I mean, it works now. It, it does what it's supposed to do. So I'll probably leave this here. If you have any questions about this or want to know how to extend it further, just put a comment in the, below this video. If you have any other questions about Unreal itself or any other tutorials you'd like to see, then again, just comment on this video saying, you know, can you do a tutorial on such and such? And I'll see what I can do. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.